Welcome to another edition of the UTPA Baseball Show. My name is Jonah Goldberg. This is Manny Mentrana. <laughs> good, good to see you again, Jonah. <laughs> He's the head coach of the Bronx, and the Bronx got their first taste of WAC play this weekend. Uh, they were the 11th of 14 Bronx teams to get their first look at the WAC and uh, took the WAC opener 9-4 to on Friday. It was a good day Friday, Jonah. Everybody was excited. Uh, it's a, a new era. Uh, here at Pan Am, obviously, um, going into the WAC, and it was our first opportunity to compete in the WAC. Um, and we made the uh, home fans happy with the uh, 9-4 win on Friday night. So it was uh, it was good to start uh, conference play, and we're looking forward to the rest of the year. Everything seemed to be working well, offense, defense, pitching. What were you happiest about? You know what? Uh, we were happy that uh, our players were disciplined. Uh, we got a lot of walks. Uh, also got hit by a lot of pitches. Um, but I thought um, our players not only – with the walks, but with big two-out hits, that uh, those are really important if you're going to win a, a championship. You need the big two-out hits uh, with runners in scoring position, and we were able to do that on multiple occasions Friday night. Yeah, and they just every time they got, I mean, seven hit batters, and uh, every time they got plugged, they just put their head down and ran down to first base, didn't really think about it at all, which was good. Well, they're a lot tougher than uh, than 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 I was, because if 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 I would get hit and it would hurt, I would scratch it a little bit, but. Uh, you know, it wasn't anything serious. They, they did get hurt. I thought maybe Blake Thomas, uh, he got hit on the elbow. I thought that might be an issue, but he swung the bat really, really well over the weekend, and he was able to catch all three games since our, our starting catcher, Jacob Huckabee, has been out with a knee injury since the Oklahoma State Series. Uh, in the game, uh, Sam Street do did what Sam Street does. He threw his NCAA leading fourth complete game of the year. You know what? Uh, he, he got a little bit of a, of a tough inning there in the seventh inning. Um, but earlier on in the game, in the, uh, in the fourth inning, when New Mexico State loaded up the bases and he, got, he managed to get out of it again with, uh, with zero runs, that's what he does. Um, and, it, and again, he works his way out of it. He, he understands himself, he understands pitching, and he's just a tremendous competitor. Yeah, in that fourth inning, not a single ball was hit uh, nine, you know, 90 feet. Uh, in the infield single, at uh, bang, bang, play at first base, could have gone either way. Yep. The bunt single, there would, probably wouldn't have been a bunt if the first guy doesn't get on, and that just barely snuck through on the right side, and then a hit batter. But, you know, Street uh, was just like, oh, okay, whatever, and he did his thing. Exactly and right. He, and he retired 18 of the first 21 batters he faced. Exactly right. A lot, a lot of uh, pitchers, you know, pitch well when, uh, when things are going smooth, Jonah. Uh, Sam does both. You know, he, things are going smooth, he maintains it that way, but when he gets into a little bit of trouble, he really, really rises to the occasion, and he makes big pitches when he needs to, and that's what uh, makes him special. And what I found so amazing was that, you know, even in the, the late game situations, they get runners on, and he still is able to keep them down even as he, you know, hits pitch number 151. With him, you know what, uh, we asked him how he was going because, you know, right about 135, he throws 15 an inning. Um, then we, we, you know, we, we start paying close attention to him. Um, and his velocity was still up. I mean, he, uh, he was 87, 88 late into the game. So that's one of the factors that you consider. But, uh, you know, he wants to be in there, and as long as he feels good um, and, when, you know, he doesn't get hurt, which is the primary thing uh, uh, with him, um, you know, we, he's our best. So if, if he thinks he can do it, uh, we're going to keep him in there. Is it that he's just conditioned to be able to throw that many pitches, or does he have a rubber arm? You know what, with him, obviously, he's a little bit of both. He has, uh, he's conditioned to throw that, you know, you know, those pitches, but also his mechanics and his, uh, his release point really kind of, they're, they're both factors into him being able to, to go long distances. Some guys that are max effort every single pitch uh, wouldn't be able to do that. But uh, with him, with his mechanics, uh, he's sound mechanically. I mean, very good fundamentals. He repeats his delivery. Um, and on top of that, he does quite a little bit of running with our pitching program. So um, with him in there, we want our best guy out there in that uh, in the ninth inning, and that's Sam. And the team got him uh, quite a bit of offense. You know, it's funny, you guys didn't even have a hit through the first three innings, and then all of a sudden in the fourth, Boom, boom, double, double. There's a run just like that. That was big. That was big. That, that got us going, and, um, and we, we were able to score a few on that inning. And then, um, you know, Ramirez, and then I think it was Garcia with back-to-back -back doubles to get us on the board. And with Sam, you know, we, we usually play for two or three runs because most of his outings, if we score two or three runs for him, we're going to win. Um, and in this outing, we were fortunate because he really – he goes up against everybody's best Friday night. Everybody throws their best Friday night. Um, and Sam goes against, up against everybody's best. So, you know, their pitching is pretty good, too. We're usually, you know, two or three runs. That's all your Friday night is guy's going to give up. Um, but this one Friday night, we were fortunate to give him 
uh, nine runs, and you know when, when you give him that many runs, you can forget about it. He's going to win. Yeah, a, a seven-run fifth inning that it just wouldn't end. I mean, you sent uh, 12 men to the plate in that inning. That was a good inning. That was that was a fun <laughs> inning. Uh, we need more. We need more of those innings uh, uh, during the season. But uh, anytime you can send 12 guys at the plate uh, to the plate and score seven runs, makes a coach happy. Makes me, uh, you know, stop losing hair. So we are we were very very happy with that with that inning. <laughs> and, and Alex, how uh, bases clearing double to cap that inning. And then the next day, he had another three-run double. Both of them uh, split the outfielders in the left center gap. When I mean, they looked like they were the exact same hit each time. Yeah, he did a great job um, on both nights for us, picking us up. Um, like you mentioned, the first night with, uh, I was one of the big hits uh, with two outs. He cleared the bases, and he came back again um, and did the same thing for us with the bases loaded. So he's really swinging the bat well. Um, we're looking forward to him continuing to swing the, the uh, bat well. And hopefully three or four of the guys that we need to join him up there can get hot so that we can uh, score some runs. Is there a specific approach uh, you have with how that he's able to go the opposite field with those doubles? It's, it's not only with, with Alex. So there's a you know, specific approach that we implement with, with our offense, with all of our players. When we have runners in scoring position and two outs, uh, we, we want them thinking a certain way and trying to do a, uh, uh, a specific thing. Um, you know, obviously, some players are able to to implement it a lot you know, better than others. But it's the same approach. Anytime we have runners in scoring position uh, with two outs, um, they have a plan. They have to kind of follow that plan. And usually will lead, will lead to good things. Well, the next day, Saturday comes around. That game uh, was a, a 7-4 loss. But there were definitely some positives in that game. I mean, you look at uh, the bullpen, for example. Uh, anybody who recorded at least an out didn't give up a run. That, uh, you know, the bullpen has been our Achilles heels uh, for the entire, basically our entire season. Um, this, on this case, uh, they did a good job. I, uh, you know, we committed five errors, which is not something that you want to do. Yet, uh, we were still in the game, you know, that we're down by four, we tied it, and the final score ended up 7-4. But anytime you commit five errors um, and you're still in the game, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty good. And unfortunately for us, you know, with those five errors, that's what caused us the game. In that game, uh, Andrew Padron, I know you, you mentioned last week you've been working on him with his arm slot. Well, he comes out three and a third scoreless. So did you think that his arm was back where it was supposed to be? It's, it's still it's, it's a work in progress, Jonah. Uh, he threw some pitches that you, you can tell by the velocity. Um, he should be, you know, 85, 87. Um, and some of the pitches he threw, his velocity was back up. But it's going to take him a little while just to get used to being consistent with that, with his arm slot. And it, it was his natural arm slot um, that we're trying to get him back to. For some reason, he kind of got lower and lower uh, to the point where he was almost a side armor. Um, mm. And one of the uh, tailing signs of that is just uh, the velocity. I mean, when we recruited him in high school, he was 84, 86. In the fall, he was 85, 87. He would touch a couple 88s. But early on in the year, he was 79 to 81. So there wasn't anything uh, with his arm as far as injury or anything. He just dropped his release point one or two inches, and, that, and that's a big difference for a pitcher. And Tanner Dickerson, I mean, this is pretty much a every time he comes out there type of thing, three shutout innings. Tanner, Tanner has, has done a really, really good job uh, uh, since uh, joining us. Um, he's been a pleasant surprise. We thought he was going to be uh, pretty good down the road, but uh, for, you know, what he's done as a freshman, bringing him in into some really, really difficult situations um, and him finding a way to get out of it, uh, he's, been a, he's been a plus out of the bullpen. Um, and we, but we need a couple more guys to be able to do that. Austin Casas, he got off to such a strong start in his first three outings this year. Then he had a little bit of a rough go of it. You brought him in, he gets, he faced two batters. They both grind out the short. Do you think that's a good confidence builder for him? With with Austin, he's, I mean, he's really tough on right-handers. He comes from that low sidearm delivery, Jonah. So he's tough on righties. His up, his issues are with lefties. So basically, with uh, with Austin, his job on this team, uh, he's our right-handed specialist. You know, if we need to get a guy out late in the game. Uh, and he's a right-handed hitter. We're going to go to Austin because he's really tough on righties. And then Jared Johnson uh, done a nice job against lefties, actually, even though he's a righty. So you brought him in to face the lefties later. Yeah, that, Jared he? has, you know, a uh, pretty good fastball. He's in the high 80s. He'll touch 90, 91. Um, so we brought him in uh, to face a lefty. And again, some, you know, some guys do well, depending on what their ball does and, and what their best pitches are. Um, some guys do better against righties and, and some guys do better against lefties. So with Jared, it's about 50-50. Uh, he can get, probably get right-handers out, uh, also left-handers. But it's nice to have him back. He was, he's been dealing uh, with an injury. Uh, he, learned, you know, he hurt his back uh, in junior college and has been kind of messing with him. So hopefully we'll get him back to 100% uh, uh, health-wise and he'll be able to contribute on the mound and out of the bullpen for us.
And uh, offensively, Alberto Morales, you give him an inside fastball and there's only one place it's going to go. You know what? That was really good because he had two strikes on him. Um, and, you know, he's trying to put the ball in play to put the pressure on the defense. Um, and you're right. Uh, you know, a lot of times two strikes, it's a reaction pitch because now you have to protect the, the entire zone. Until you get two strikes, we try for our players to kind of look for their pitch, uh, you know, when there's not a situation and get it. If there's situational hitting, then it's different. But with two strikes, you know, it's reaction. you got to protect all 49 balls in the strike zone instead of protecting just the, uh, the nine that we asked him to. And he did a great job. Two strikes, he really turned on it, uh, uh, and he hit it out of the park, which was big. It, late in the game, in the ninth inning, uh, Blake Thomas hit a double. And the next day, he had his first ever multi-hit game with a double as you moved him up into the cleanup spot. It's kind of like you knew he was going to have a, a good offensive game. Well, I talked to you before the game and you thought it was a good move, so I decided, <laughs> you know, if Jonah says yes, then we're going to put him in the fourth spot. But uh, Coach Lopez has been working with him on a swing. Uh, he had a little bit of a problem not getting into a, a correct slot with his top arm. He was just extended too early. And Coach Lopez has been working with him pretty much uh, on a daily basis for the last probably four or five days, getting him out early, getting some extra hacks in BP, uh, and it really paid off for him. He looked uh, really, really good. I mean, he had some tremendous at-bats yesterday, and I believe out of the four bats, he had three really good at-bats. So he's a freshman, um, and we had him hit fourth, and, and he came through, like you said. He'd, uh, he probably looked the best uh, offensively of any of our players yesterday. Yeah, you know, a lot of you know freshmen, you put him in the cleanup spot, especially when he had really just been a part-time player until this past week, and yet... Are you impressed by just how he it was able to respond and didn't shrink away from that responsibility? Well, you know what, Blake is uh, he's, he's he's a tough mental mental uh, mentally as far as a player he's very uh, mentally tough. Um, he's a catcher, which by most standards, if you're a catcher, uh, you're a tough guy because you know you have to put on those tools of ignorance every day and those foul balls and balls in the dirt that you're black and blue. So he's a tough kid uh, and mentally too. So uh, I didn't think it was uh, you know too much for him. Um, to hit fourth, even though it's, you know, it's a primary position. And he came through with flying colors for us. Then, uh, you know, on the pitching side, I mean, you got really strong pitching. It was a 3-2 to loss with Blake English. Uh, in the first six innings, he didn't allow anything across. He had a one-hitter going uh, in, into the fifth, and then two, uh, two hits after five. I mean, he was virtually unhittable in the first few innings. It was by far his best performance. Uh, also uh, with Blake, um, We've kind of been working on a few mechanical things uh, to get him back to where he needs to be. And, and that work started to pay off yesterday. Uh, you know, I thought he should have won. Uh, we dropped the ball. We didn't turn a double play, and that led to the three runs. Um, because if we catch that fly ball and we turn that double play, they wouldn't score that inning. So, um, you know, we made a couple mistakes that cost us, but I thought Blake threw extremely well. And, um, you know, hopefully he'll be our, our third conference uh, starter on the weekends. Yeah, I mean, he struck out seven. He'd never struck out more than three in and out before. What was he doing to uh, induce all those Ks? You know what? He was keeping the ball down a lot, and his, and his changeup was his, his best pitch, Jonah. Uh, it was really effective yesterday, and a lot has to do with how he was using his front side. Uh, he was really falling off and not, you know, staying directional uh, towards the target. So um, I thought he did a really good job using the front side yesterday. His velocity was up. His changeup was dominating, as you said, um, and it was by far his best performance all year. Uh, Chris McKeon, we, first time we've seen him at home, so it's the first time uh, that a lot of people around here have gone to see him, and he came in, he looked really good. Another freshman, um, which really picked up uh, a really good curveball, uh, probably about two weeks ago, started working on it. Um, he's, he's another kid that's mentally tough. Um, he, even though he's a freshman, uh, he doesn't act like a freshman. When he's on the mound, you know, he's, he's a mature. Uh, he acts like a senior, but his breaking ball is uh, his bread and butter. That's really a really good out pitch that he can throw even when the hitters are expecting a Jonah. Um, it's, it's hard. It's got good depth to it. It's got two plane movement late. So we're excited with him. You know, he was closing. We were saving him to be the closer this week, and we had to bring him in after English to make sure that we stayed in the game, and he did. He kept us in the game, and it, uh, they didn't score um, after they scored those three runs. So is it good to see that the, the bullpen is really starting to come around this weekend? Absolutely. You know what? Uh, you, know, you need a bullpen. You know, you're not going to have guys like Sam go uh, the entire game, uh, not, not as starters. And, and if, once your starter falters, what you want from the bullpen is to keep you in the game, give, give you a chance to come back if you're, if you're behind or if you're in the lead, keep you there. So that was probably out of the entire three-game set. Um, the bullpen was the best, uh, the, you know, the most pleasant surprise for us, and it was the best it's been all year long. 
now you hit the road for uh, five games. I uh, started out with TCU. They were ranked 27th in last week's polls. I haven't seen this week's polls yet, but uh, so you know whether they're ranked or not, they're or where they're ranked, they're always a, a good team, and you play them Tuesday, Wednesday. They are. They are a very good team. Um, you know they've got some some guys pitching that can bring it mid to, to high 90s. Their pitching is their strength. They play good defense. Um, they're a scrappy team. They'll you know they'll run and do some things to score some runs. So it's uh, it doesn't get any easier. You know Texas A&M Oklahoma State. Now TCU for two, and then uh, we'll stay in Dallas overnight and take an early flight Thursday and head to Seattle for our second uh, uh, WAC uh, weekend. Then uh, Seattle, um, we play them Friday, Saturday, Sunday at TCU, Tuesday and Wednesday. You can catch all the live stats and broadcasts as available up at utpabronx.com. He's Manny Mantrana. He is the head coach of the UTPA baseball team. <laughs> this is Jonah Goldberg. We'll be back with you next week right here on 956sports.com. <laughs>